Hello everyone and welcome to the first Eagle Labs Agritech Awareness Week. I'm Roxanne Martin and I lead the Agritech Eagle Lab programming, industry programming for part of Barclays. We have an absolutely packed agenda for you this week. Um, starting with the first webinar um, of the series for this week, which is all around the importance of agritech for agriculture and the UK. So really setting the scene as to just how important agritech is um, to, to the global, global agricultural industry um, and the opportunities that there are for agritech innovators out there. Now, before I start, um, I do just need to read a quick disclaimer to you all um, for regulatory reasons, and then I can then go get on with the um, get on with the webinar. So we've asked both Chris Lyons from Innovate UK and David Telfer from KTN to join us today to provide some tips and tricks on the importance of agritech within agriculture. So the topics discussed are an overview of options for you to think about to help with your independent research and business decisions. So aren't intended as recommendations or advice. Remember, as well as that your as well as that your business has its own individual circumstances, the statements and views expressed may not be applicable or suitable for your business. So just before I introduce both of our speakers today, um, I just want to give you a very, very brief overview on, on the Barclays Eagle Labs, who we are, what we do, and a little bit around the agritech industry programming um, that, that we put together for, for the industry. So Eagle Labs, we are the UK's largest network of business incubators. We have 25 at the moment, as far south as Jersey and as far north as Aberdeen. Um, we have around about 1,500 residents across 600 businesses and a whole host of really exciting, innovative companies that we support from agritech to health tech, law, creative industries. We are industry agnostic, so we will support um, any tech business um, that's looking to scale up quickly. So how do we support agritech businesses what are our objectives so first and foremost um our first objective is all around accelerating uk business so what we want to do we want to support high potential and high growth technology businesses that are starting to scale um and they're starting to be on that high growth trajectory. We want to do that through connecting our agritech startup community to R&D expertise, to farmers and the wider supply chain as well. So we're very much about collaboration and working together. Our second objective is very much around that collaboration piece, so what we call collaborative innovation. So at the moment, in the face of all this emerging technology um, and disruption across all industries, um, there's never really been a better time to connect our startup community with these more established corporates, bring them together so they can exchange ideas, partner um, and innovate. So it's really all around stimulating innovation and collaboration across the whole food supply chain from field to fork. Our last objective is what we call Industry 4.0. So that's making technology relevant and accessible for everyone. So we do that through providing training. We do events such as these today. Um, and it's all really very much around the demystification of technology. Um, so it's it's all around, nobody kind of cares that an Alexa is, is art, uses artificial intelligence or anything like that. It's all around what is it, what can it do, and how does it support me and my business? So our vision, we really want to help um, the UK agriculture industry become the um, become the most sustainable farming industry in the world. And we want to do that through simply through the demystification of technology and encouraging collaboration across the um, whole food supply chain. To put it simply, we want to help the UK agriculture industry feed the world without wrecking the planet. So for those of you out there who are new to agriculture and new to agritech and are wondering what the buzz is all about and why agritech is so important to the industry, I'm just going to go through some high level facts with you um, around some around population, food, that kind of thing to really help set the scene for, for what you're going to learn throughout the course of this week. So the, the world's population is expected to reach um, over 9 billion people by 2050. Now, depending on what statistic you read, that means that we're going to need to produce anywhere between 60 to 70 percent more food. Now, how are we as a global population going to produce more food with less land, but do that in an environmentally sustainable way? And agritech is very much seen as the holy grail to that um, and how that's how that's going to basically help feed an ever growing population for, for years to come. So what can we do about it? 
Well, there's some new technologies and techniques that are being developed, um, not just in the UK, but all over the world as well. And we're going to hear from two really interesting speakers today um, from both KTN and Innovate UK, just around how they support these kind of businesses to help them um, help them develop and innovate the, the, the latest technologies in order to solve some of these challenges that I've mentioned. So it's my absolute pleasure to, um, to introduce to you both Chris Lyons from Innovate UK um, and David Telfer from KTM. And they're gonna go through exactly what some of the key challenges are within the industry in a little bit more detail um, and the opportunities that, that there are within it. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to our first speaker today, Chris Lyons, who is the Innovation Lead in Agriculture and Innovate UK. Thank you very much, Roxanne. And thank you to the Eagle Labs for organising this week of Agritech Awareness. It promises to be a fantastic week of information. Okay, so my name's Chris Lyons, as previously stated, and I am the Innovate UK Lead for Agriculture. Uh, just a little bit scene setting, what I'm going to be talking about. So we're going to talk about Innovate UK and UK research and innovation. A little bit more on what is Agritech, some of the challenges that we're facing at the moment. Uh, stimulating investment, the UK's investment in Agritech. How we look in terms of our European position and some concluding remarks. Okay, so I'll keep going and talk to you about research and innovation. So we work with the government to invest over £7 billion a year in research and innovation by partnering with academia and industry to make the impossible possible through the UK's nine leading academic industrial funding councils. We create knowledge and impact. And as you can see those logos flashing up, there are seven research councils we are Innovate UK and there is also Research England, all there funding the best research. So in terms of Innovate UK, Innovate UK is the government's innovation agency. We drive productivity and growth by supporting businesses to realise the potential of new technologies, develop ideas and make them a commercial success. To stay competitive as an advanced economy, we need to do things that others cannot do or do things in different and better ways. And never has it been more important for Innovate UK. Recent funding calls have highlighted and accelerated agri-tech technologies in response to the COVID-19 challenges and opportunities that the industry has faced. From developing labour supply platforms to match employers and provider requirements, to advancing the development of AI and robotics in the field. Innovate UK have seen their most active time since its creation in the rollout of COVID fast track support and COVID continuity grants and loan, now the Sustainable Innovation Programme. We are the UK's innovation agency. So a little bit about the team that makes up AgriFood. So we are quite a small specialised team. We come under the wider health and life sciences sector team. And you may be familiar with some of these names, but I do recommend that you reach out and get in touch with us if you haven't been engaged with Innovate UK in the past. So let's get into the, the crux of it, agri-tech within agriculture. Now this is a very simplified and high level version of how we see agriculture in the UK. So we, we split it into four key subsectors, so that's crop, livestock which includes uh, aquaculture um, we've got alternative there which we also include controlled environment agriculture cea um, and obviously the the food supply chain at the end all with interconnected systems all with lots of technology going on at every level so that's a very high level and perhaps simplified perspective but if we can dip into a slightly more technical aspect, I'm just going to share with you the farm tech landscape infographic. Now, this is something that's been produced by the Better Food Ventures, only published a couple of months ago, and is only one landscape. And this landscape is most associated with what we consider to be the crops sector. Um, some elements obviously overlap in other sectors. Uh, 
there is a separate landscape for livestock, there's a separate landscape for controlled environment. And if you want to see an extremely busy landscape, do have a search for the food media uh, landscape of 2019. But basically, what are we seeing here on this infographic? We are seeing companies that have seen extensive investment. We are seeing companies that in some cases still climbing the TRL stages, as we refer to them. So that's the technology readiness levels. So there's some companies listed here that aren't in full commercial uh, rollout at the moment. And we are seeing on this one infographic companies from all over the world. Now, it has been produced in the United States of America, and there is quite a weighting of US companies there. But there's also companies in there from Europe from Australia, Canada, Israel, and of course there are UK companies in there, which is fantastic. So if we just spend a little bit of time focusing on this particular infographic and looking at the lighter coloured uh, areas to the left, we can see that over 50% of the activity is in digital economy and production. And this encompasses uh, much of Internet of Things, IoT, uh, robotics, um, precision irrigation, imaging systems, and the list goes on. But we can see there, for example, in automation and robotics, more or less towards the middle of your screen, the small robot company, uh, a real success story in the UK. And we've heard previous speakers on this particular program of um, Eagle Labs talking about uh, artificial intelligence and robotics. And I do urge anyone that has not seen those particular presentations to go back on the channel and look at those because they are well worth listening to again. So back to the landscape and moving to the right, we can see planning and farm management. Now, these areas, of course, intersect right across the agronomy on the left hand side but they also include resource management, business planning, and we're starting to see areas of sustainability creep in here, sustainability tools, water management tools. And if you look a little bit further down, you can see small holder farming technology. And this really is a growth area, um, an appropriate category um, in recognition of the important work by entrepreneurs all over the world. Um, as we, as well as the recent funding activity that has taken place among some of these companies. These companies are enabling economic mobility, sustainability and market access to hundreds of thousands of farmers in developing countries. And on that basis, I would just like to wave a little flag to say, do go and have a look at the uh, Agri-Tech Catalyst channel on YouTube at the moment, which uh, is being put together by the KTN and Innovate, uh, detailing all the good work and the, the open Agritech Catalyst 10 call that's out there at the moment. So back to the landscape. And if we go to the far right, we can see market access and financing. So again, not just to get across sort of uh, crops and potentially does go into other sectors, but here we can see yield forecasting. We can see farmland analytics and analysis, excuse me, um, and finance and insurance. And in finance and insurance, we can see a, an example of another UK company, um, Stable, which is out there disrupting the insurance market at the moment, which is fantastic. And another company that I will talk to you about shortly. So what can we see overall on, on this much more detailed infographic of what's going on in the market? Well, we can see data-driven solutions providing real meaningful intelligence to the farmer and thus the agri-food supply chain. So we can see the integration has to be key to bring these systems and platforms together. The next steps, clearly, in terms of agri-tech, has to be bringing together systems of systems. And I know that we've heard that previously on, on other talks on this platform. So, moving on from some of the technology, what are some of the challenges? And Again, very simplistically, these are the key areas that we're currently seeing as being the key focus for moving forward um, where Agritech can, can, can support us. So we pull together net zero and balancing natural capital into environmental threats and resilience. 
Um, we would look at uh, nutrition for health and food production integrity, for example. Um, and obviously that includes an awful lot of other issues such as diet related disease. We're talking about quality standards and traceability coming in there. We're talking about the issues around population growth and food safety. And then the final uh, to efficient production and labour. What's coming in there is obviously productivity. And we know that productivity is an issue in the UK, but this is where we've got to we've got to really focus some effort moving forward and look at how we effectively use resources. And it's it's no no mean feat why there's so many technologies now being developed in those resource issues. And obviously waste reduction is a key, utilisation, and obviously productivity has got to lead to profitability. So that's all positive stuff in terms of the challenges coming forward. Technology areas, we've looked at some of those just in that previous slide, but other areas that we could also be uh, minded of include biotechnology. Biotechnology uh, is somewhere that I think the UK really is pushing forward uh, in leaps and bounds. Obviously, advanced breeding technologies for both plant and animal um, in terms of including genetics. And we've clearly got within that integrated pest management as well. Uh, there's a whole world of innovative food out there. So we're talking novel ingredients, we're talking functional foods, we're talking nutrition by fortification. So much potential opportunity out there. We've already looked in that previous slide about robotics, equipment, mechanisation, management, sensing and IoT, agribusiness marketplace. And again, all of that was just looking in one particular subset of agriculture. So we've looked at those challenges, we looked at some of the technology there. Let's have some examples of what Innovate UK have been involved with in the past. And so in doing so, I'm going to take you back to 2010. So 2010 is when the Sustainable Agricultural and Food Innovation Programme was launched, SAFIP. So that was an investment of £90 million across nine sub-theme sub project areas. And we can see that there were 238 projects funded there. And obviously those same sort of messages in terms of themes coming through, we've got crop and livestock disease control back in 2014. We've got new approaches to crop protection, improving food supply chains, optimising food competition in 2016. So an awful lot has been going on right back to the sort of turn of, the, of 2010. And then from 2016, starting 2013 the UK's agri-tech strategy was launched with the aims of improving the translation of research into practical application for agriculture and related industries in the UK and overseas and this was an initial investment of 160 million pounds which included the funding of four agri-tech centres for innovation and the agri-tech catalyst for translational research. Now I know that you've got uh, the four directors or representatives of the four centres talking later this week. Um, but just as a, as a headline, Agrimetrics, the world's first big data centre for food in terms of collating, connecting and analysing complex data. You've got CHAP, the Crop Health and Protection uh, Centre, which is focusing on crop, pest and diseases and protecting natural resources, as well as soil health, which is obviously clearly important. CL, Europe's largest applied animal research group, uh, and clearly focusing on livestock nutrition, health and genetics. And then we've got AgriEpi, which is all about the world of engineering precision. And these centres have grown the UK's capacity for world-class research, open access platforms to be used by anyone aiming to deliver applied research to solve industry problems. And acting together, they provide a gateway to the UK market. And what else has Innovate UK got going on? So currently we have the remaining rounds of the Agritech Catalyst. Round 10 is currently open. Round 11 will be opening in 2021. The next round of Innovate UK Smart Funding will be opening on the 28th of August. 
And also you've got the Transforming Food Production, which is part of the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund, which I understand my colleague Chris Danks will be speaking on later in the week. And as, as a team, we're also currently developing a further case for ongoing support through the Comprehensive Spending Review. So before I bring this section to a conclude, I thought I'd just put up this slide just to show where the UK is in terms of agri-food investment and hopefully should segue a little bit into what David's going to be talking about. But what this does show is that in 2019, and this came from a report from AgFunder, um, which highlighted the Europe VC investment market, so only relatively recently um, been published, but it showed that uh, the UK topped all of Europe with 112 deals with over $1.1 billion worth of investment. Now, you look at the slide on the right, and that is, it has to be said, slightly skewed by a certain home delivery company, um, which is obviously in the what we would consider the agri-food wider sector. But even with ignoring Deliveroo, it does show that the UK very much is in the, the big game in terms of investments. Um, and as you can see on the right hand side, that's the top 20 VC deals in the UK. Um, and we can see UK companies there, including WeFarm, Winnow Solutions, Home Grow Technologies, previously mentioned Stable, all recipients of Innovate UK support. And we farm, interestingly, is the world's largest farmer to farmer digital network that enables farmers to share information via SMS without the internet. And they're doing great things in Africa at the moment. Um, so huge opportunities, not just in the UK, but obviously internationally as well. And the UK really is holding its own in terms of that investment piece. But as, as you can see there, the UK, Innovate UK have played a significant piece in investing in supporting these companies from the outset. So just to conclude, before handing back, the opportunity is most definitely now, it's a very exciting time in the world of agri-tech. There is not one part of UK agriculture that has not got an opportunity to uh, benefit from agri-technology. As we all are absolutely aware, COVID-19 has shone a light on challenges across agriculture and Brexit, trade deals, food waste, consumer demand, smart agriculture are all playing a significant part in the effects. Data-driven systems of systems, I believe, are the next step. And I know they've been mentioned here before, but it's very much integrating all of these technologies to get systems of systems, I think. And the final point for me is to get connected, get support, get talking to your KTN colleagues, Knowledge Transfer Network. There's also the Enterprise Europe Network. Uh, there's the Agri-Tech Centres that I've referred to. There's lots of incubators such as um, Eagle Labs. There's universities and obviously banks and other bodies. But do get involved in the sector. If you're interested, please do speak to people because it's a really exciting time. So with that, I'd like to thank you very much. If you'd like to get in touch, please do so, but otherwise I'll hand you back. Many thanks. Lovely, thank you so much, Chris. And what a presentation to, to set the scene for the rest of the week. So thank you very much for that. Um, as Chris said, if you are interested in the agri-tech um, centres and finding out a little bit more around the R&D and, and the expertise in that particular space, um, be sure to catch our webinar on Wednesday at 11 o'clock as we will have um, a representative from each of those centres um, those four centres of excellence to speak a little bit more detail around exactly what it is that they do and how they can support the industry. Thank you for that, Chris. That's been really informative. And I suppose it just goes to show that Innovate UK aren't just about grants and funding, but you're all around making real connections, introductions and very much around that collaborative piece um, that I mentioned right at the very start. So thank you again, Chris, for that. That was that was really interesting. So I'm now going to hand over to our next speaker, David Telford. David Telford is the Head of Agri-Food um, for KTM. Um, over to you, David. 
Thanks, Roxanne, and thanks for the invite to speak today. Um, it's, it's much appreciated, and I'm looking forward to the exciting week ahead. So, yeah, my name's David Telford. I'm the head of the agri-food team at the Knowledge Transfer Network, and today I'm going to speak about the importance of agri-tech innovation. Just to start with, I'll give you a quick overview of the presentation today. I'm going to start with a quick introduction to the KTN in terms of who we are and what we do. I'm going to move on to look at some of the challenges facing agriculture. I'm going to move into a section look at agri looking at agri-tech innovation in terms of two pieces of activity, the agri-tech investment showcase that we run within the KTN and also an initiative called Knowledge Transfer Partnerships. And I'll finish off with some thoughts for the future. But if I just move on to provide an introduction to the KTN to start with in terms of who we are and what we do. So we are a UK-wide innovation network. We're funded by Innovate UK to um, work throughout the UK to bring together businesses, entrepreneurs, academics and funders to help them to innovate, to turn new innovations into products and processes and services. And we're doing that for all the key reasons, um, particularly to grow the economy, but also to improve people's lives and improve society by capturing the maximum value from innovation. And this slide just sums up why we do that. So um, we've got loads of clever people around the UK who have got great ideas and they want to be able to turn them into products or services. But to take forward those innovations, they often need really good connections to drive forward and accelerate that innovation. So for example, you might have someone who needs to be linked up to a university partner to help them undertake the research and development. They might need to be connected to an end user who could be a co-developer and an end user of that technology. Or they might need access to funding or finance and investment and things. So we can help with all of those different areas just to accelerate the rate of innovation. Um, this slide shows all the different areas in which we work. So we've got about 200 staff based throughout the UK and we work in pretty much every industry sector and technology area in the UK. Um, so we've got people working in all the different areas shown on the screen here and teams in those areas. Um, and the reason for that is we spend a lot of time bringing together different groups that would not normally meet. And that's because we find that's when the best innovation happens by bringing those people together. And at the interface between two groups, you often get really strong innovation. So just a couple of examples of that. Um, I sit in the agri-food team, like I said, but I've been working very closely with my colleagues in the robotics team recently. Um, we've been bringing our two communities together to look at how robotics can address some of the challenges going on in agri-food in terms of a shortage of labour to access, um, to pick fruit and veg, essentially. And so we've been looking at how new robotics technologies and automation technologies can be taken from the robotics scene and applied in agri-food. Another example would be um, if an agri-food company comes to me and said, look, we didn't need a new sensor technology to solve a problem we've got. I might not know that sensor company myself, but if I go and speak to my colleagues who've got more expertise in sensors, they'll say, speak to company X or speak to company Y who can solve that problem. So it, that, that mix of different expertise works really well. And here's just an example of um, when it does work well, um, what happens, and it's a quote from someone we've worked with in the past. So this is a quote from Professor Mel Smith, who's um, from the Bristol Robotics Lab at the University of the West of England. And we've been working with Mel for about seven or eight years now, something like that. So we first started working with Mel because um, an agri-food company came to us and said they were wanting some new technology to monitor dairy cattle. Um, and we said, okay, a new imaging technology could do that. And we introduced this agri-food company to Mel so he could work um, with this company and they could co-develop this technology and apply it, um, apply this um, expertise in agri-food. So that worked really well. Um, the, the technology is now getting to market. But a key point of that is that after that first introduction, Mel's then gone on to undertake 16 further projects in the agri-food um, sector, applying his expertise in imaging technologies. Um, and that's great because it's bringing new expertise into the area from another sector. So Mel's typically worked in other areas such as defense. So that's um, hopefully a good example for you there. Just to quickly sum up though, what we do within the KTN and it's um, building on what Roxanne and and Chris have said already today. So a key part of what we do is all about partnering. So we provide access to a very strong network of industry and research partners in lots of different industry sectors and technology areas. But in agri-food alone, we work with 9,000 individual people all interested in innovation. So we can help you find partners for projects with consortia building and finding commercial partners. The second really key thing we do is once you've got that partnership and that project ID and you want to take it further, we help people access funding, particularly grant funding, but also investment as well. And we tend to know all the different funding schemes available from groups such as Innovate UK and the different schemes Chris has talked about today, but also from the research 
can't source from Europe and other things like that. So we tend to know what's the best scheme for your project and how you should best apply for it. We organize a lot of events to brief about funding schemes for knowledge transfer about the latest scientific findings or industry trends, but also to enable collaboration so people can meet each other and begin these new collaborations. And lastly, because we're the central point in the network, we like to think we're a one-stop shop of information news. We tend to know what's going with, on with industry, academia, research and funders, and we disseminate that information out via our newsletters and our website and social media. Just to finish off in terms of what we do, um, this slide shows our team. Uh, we've got 10 people working in the agri-food team in the KTN with our expertise shown on the left of the screen. Um, if you look at the right of the screen though, um, it shows all the different areas in which we've worked. So we work right the way from farm to fork essentially um, and all the different types of um, agri-tech and um, food processing and manufacturing as well. And if you want to know more about that, see the link down the bottom. Just going to move on now to talk about some of the challenges facing agriculture. So this is a slide from um, the former chief scientist John Beddington. It's, it was called this perfect storm um, and it's quite, quite old now, but it's still very relevant to what's going on today and some of the challenges facing agriculture and food production. So this perfect storm was all about looking at the different things shown on screen here, um, which sums up all the different factors which are challenging agriculture and food production at, at this time. So there's competition for land use. We've got challenges such as a scarcity of fresh water. Everyone knows about the problems climate changing, uh, climate change is causing. We've got new emergent pests and diseases linked to that. We've got population growth and we're beyond peak oil now. So lots of different challenges, which when they're all coming together at one time, are placing a real strain on agriculture and food production. And I think the key point is in the context of agri-tech, you know, these are really massive challenges and we can't keep doing what we've been doing for the last 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, et cetera. Innovation is going to be key to helping agriculture and food production address these challenges, and particularly in terms of agri-tech. If we look more at a UK level now, though, so why is agri-tech agri -tech important? So I think it's really important to mention that agriculture, food and drink, it's the UK's largest manufacturing industry. So it's larger than automotive and aerospace combined. Um, and that's a really key thing. You know, I think we don't often realise how, how um, what an important industry is, essentially. Also, if you look there, um, the UK's food supply chain contributed 121 billion to the UK economy in 2018 and supports around 4 million jobs. It's a really, really important sector. Um, and as a result of that importance, agri-tech is crucial in, in two main ways, really. One, it's to underpin the agri-food production and help agri-food production address all those challenges I mentioned on the previous slide. But also, agri-tech is an important industry sector in its own right in terms of it represents a significant export opportunity for high value technology. So a lot of the technology developed in the UK, it's not just applicable to the UK. It can be sold globally and particularly in a post Brexit world that could be increasingly important. I'm just gonna move on now to look at um, agri-tech innovation and cover off um, just a couple of initiatives. The first is the KTN Agri-Tech Investment Showcase, um, which we've been running, we're into the fourth year of this now. So essentially, this is a, um, an investment showcase program where we aim to boost the investment into early stage agri-tech companies in the UK. Um, so essentially, we, we run a call and a competition to say what to find out what companies are out there. We select some of those companies and give them a pitch training program. And then we pick the best of those companies and put them in front of investors. Um, and so it's a really interesting program. You get to meet lots of interesting companies. And it's very complementary to the role of supporting grant funding. So a lot of this private investment funding is really important to match some of the grant funding which is out there as well. Um, we've been doing this for, like I say, we're into the fourth year now. But over that time, we've built a community of agri-tech investors. So we've got about 120 investors that we work with as part of this programme. And in the first three years that we've run the, uh, the program, we've worked with 55 companies in the UK. We've all received training. And of those, we selected 25 to put in front of investors. And it's key to say it's been supported by Innovate UK and Chris's team and their college, colleagues as well, other colleagues at Innovate UK, but also Farm 491 and Rabobank as well. So we're running the scheme again this year. And just a few details about that. We opened up this scheme earlier in the year to applications and received over 75 applications which was um, a big increase on previous years, and I think is both a reflection of the, the different new agri-tech companies out there, but also because there's more companies looking for investment, particularly with things that are going out there um, in terms of economics. Um, so we've selected 28 companies from those 75, and we're training them at the moment, 
and then we'll put them in front of Agritech investors in October this year. So if you are an Agritech investor out there and want to get involved with that, please do let me know. Um, and also just to flag something else up, this does align really well with a new um, funding program which has been launched called the Transforming Food Production Series A Investor Partnership Program, which is a new uh, mechanism to help investors to apply to partner with Innovate UK to align their investment alongside grant funding coming from the Industrial Strategy Challenge Fund. So um, that scheme is just going to be launched um, at the moment. If you Google it, you'll find details, or please do let me know. But essentially, it aims to boost investment into Series A companies in the UK. And it's open to investors who'd like to get involved with that just now. Just a few lessons learned from the uh, Agritech Showcase over the years. We've run it, though. And you can find out more about this in detail at the link at the bottom of the screen there. But a key thing is every year we run the program, we think, actually, is there going to be a, enough new companies next year to run this again? Or we're going to run out of new companies? But... I think the key point is there's no shortage of new companies. You know, we see more and more companies um, occurring every year and coming out of the woodwork. So I think that's really impressive and uh, a good reflection of the state of agritech in the UK. Another key point is the UK does seem to be very good at generating startups from outside the agri-food area. So we're getting lots of people coming out from some of the uh, really high quality universities in the UK with particular technology expertise and thinking that I could apply this in lots of industry sectors but quite a lot of them are picking on agri-food as a, as a market opportunity. And lastly, when we started this program, um, we were thinking, you know, we had a big focus on improving investment, but there's lots of other benefits which have happened at the same time. So we've seen um, a lot of the companies increasing their, their success at winning grants. We've seen collaborations between the different cohort of companies that work together. And also we're finding lots of good end, end user connections that we're able to make through the program. So a lot of these companies, they really know the technology very well but they can be accelerated even further by connecting them to large companies who really know the industry well. Um, the thing I want to move on to next, though, if you are an early stage agri-tech company in the UK, this initiative might be useful for you um, to help you develop your technology. So it's an initiative called the Knowledge Transfer Partnership Scheme, um, a funding mechanism which has been around for about 40 years now in various guises, excuse me, but it's still going strong today. And so this basically is to enable knowledge transfer and a collaboration between a business partner and an academic partner. And the knowledge is transferred from the academic to the business partner via a recent graduate who moves to the business partner and is supervised by the academic. And they work on a dedicated project of between 12 and 36 months in length. So it's a really nice way to get new expertise and work on a ring fence project. And 12,000 businesses throughout the UK have benefited from this from over the years. Um, and there's been lots of good examples in agri-food as well, with just a couple shown here. So the first is a project from the company Intelligent Growth Solutions um, in Scotland. They're working with the James Hutton Institute to work on um, new high-intensity crop growing systems. And another Scottish project, um, Sterling Potatoes, working with Abate University on new products and packaging solutions. But if you go to the link at the bottom there, you can search on agri-food projects and see all the different projects underway in the UK. Just to finish on this section, though, if you are interested in this, please do get in touch with me and I can link you up to colleagues who work in the area. Um, but just to say there is a large budget of funding available. Um, there's a budget of 41 to 51 million pounds this year to go into the scheme. There does need to be co uh, company contributions as well. Uh, but in big picture terms, there is more total funding available than last year, which is good news. Just wanted to finish off by talking about some thoughts for the future to sum up. Um, uh, some of the different things which I think are really pertinent to the moment. So we do work with lots of different companies and, and research groups throughout the UK, as well as governments and funders as well, like Chris. Um, and I think we've also we've been working with those guys continually, but also we've been asking out some steering boards we've worked with recently. What are their thoughts um, on the future in terms of industry needs and technology development? And I'd just like to share a few of those now. So the first thing, some some big trends in terms of um, industry needs and the state of the industry at the moment um, in, in light of COVID-19 and some of the changes there. So I think something that's come tonight recently is, is um, COVID-19 has caused um, increased technology adoption, certainly in the short term. You know, farmers have had to use new digital and other technology solutions to cope with things like lockdown. And I think that in, in the big picture terms, that's good. It means that those kind of technologies are more likely to be adopted and embed, embedded in future. Another key thing is there are going to be changes to supply chains likely in future. So when COVID-19 hit, I think everyone realized that actually, you know, food food is really important. How do I access my food? You know, that's what consumers were thinking. 
but equally people within the industry were looking at the, some of their the supply chains as well and thinking actually can we do different things differently in future so i think supply chain is a much greater focus now and people are starting to look at can we have shorter supply chains here i think something else which is coming to sharp sharp focus is um, some of the labor challenges around agri-food production so again if we look at things like um harvesting of fruit and vegetables and when when there were problems in terms of getting labor into the uk from europe um that's likely to be a problem next year with as well with brexit so there is a lot of interest just at the moment in terms of new automation and robotics technologies and i think that's likely to be accelerated even further in the coming years and finally net zero a lot of people are talking about net zero in the wider society but agri food's got a big part to play here as well and there does seem to be a lot of interest from agri food companies there as well so how does that translate into research and development needs? So there's lots of different technologies on screen here, which um, Roxanne and Chris have talked about to some extent already today. So I won't dwell on these, but I'd just like to pick on a few technologies which have particularly come into sharp focus recently. Down the bottom left-hand side, um, forecasting and risk models. I think that they are likely to become increasingly important, you know, with a time of, um, you know, financial change and economic change. Um, and in potential increased risks out there, essentially. There's new, new technologies which can help mitigate those risks are really important. Integrated pest management is a really hot topic at the, the minute as well. Um, so we ran an event on that earlier in the year and it was sold out with um, over 300 people in attendance. So it's a really important area in terms of um, the withdrawal of agricultural chemicals and things like that. So um, that's a really hot topic. And finally, um, everything around carbon. So there's a lot of interest in, in, in carbon calculation tools in terms of how can you capture data in an automated way and in real time. That's a really hot topic at the moment. You know, there's lots of variation um, within a farm, never mind between farms and different systems. So that's a really important area. And linked to that, you know, carbon training and carbon funding models are really hot area where agriculture can potentially get more involved in future. Just to finish off, a few final thoughts. Um, I think responsiveness to change is going to become even more important. You know, we've got um, we've got climate change, we've changed extreme weather, we've got the economic change and Brexit and different things like that. And how um, agriculture and food production responds to that change is going to become really important. And technology can certainly help with that. I think when we're speaking to technology developers, it's always important to emphasise it's not just about the technology. We can do the technology very well, but it's really important that you don't forget about the farmer and adoption. Otherwise, um, you know, there's a danger that technology will be developed and won't be taken up. I think collaboration is key. And I mean that within agriculture, so, you know, between crop based production and livestock production, but right the way across um, supply chains as well, from the farmer through to the retailer. And also um, with industry sectors and technology areas outside agriculture, I'm sure we can do more there. Finally, um, can we scale agritech more in the UK? I think we do have some great early stage companies in the UK. We perhaps haven't scaled some of those companies as well as we could have done in the UK in the past. But new initiatives like the Series A investment mechanism I mentioned earlier on are really exciting developments. And finally, the UK is a really good place for agritech development. We've got world leading strength in agri-food research, but also in other sectors that can be applied in agriculture. So I think it's a really exciting place to be at the moment and lots of good opportunities for the future. Um, we can circulate these slides afterwards, but if you do want to find out more, um, here's some web links where you can find out more to some of the things I've mentioned today. I'd just like to thank you for your attention. Thank you. Great. Thank you, David. That was that was so interesting. And I think there's so many opportunities for, for businesses to, to really get involved, involved with yourself. So just just one question from me, just on that, just on that point that there, there are just so many opportunities to get involved. So I know you mentioned that you've got the knowledge transfer partnerships, you've got the Agritech Investment Showcase. So a number of different avenues in which businesses can get in touch with you. So I just wondered, you've probably seen tons of applications over your time um working for innovate uk so to you what does the perfect innovate uk application look like and in your opinion what are say the top three must-haves that have to be included that, that you're really looking for great thanks roxanne yeah so yeah so it's a really yeah we do we work with lots of different people and help them with the the grant applications and uh, so we have seen a lot over the years um so i think if you were applying to um one of the Innovate UK competitions like smart funding or something like that, or any of the dedicated agri-tech schemes as well. Um, I think a good application's got to fit the scope of the competition, you know, to be eligible to start with. That's a key point. But if I was to pick out just a few key characteristics, I think every application could have a strong business case. So, you know, 
that project mm -hmm. has got to lead onto something which is going to make money for the company and the sector in due course. That will be the first thing. Um, there's going to be a clear need for support. You know, you're asking for government funding, so why would you not do this yourself? Why do you need um, government support? So often, that's because the technology might, um, the technology development might involve a lot of risk, and it's perfectly fine to say that. You know, that Innovate UK are looking to invest in risky projects, but they're also looking for you, you to explain how you're going to manage and mitigate that risk. Mm -hmm. And I think thirdly, it's got to be highly innovative. It's not got to be something which has been done already. So you've got to show how it's technically or commercially innovative. Um, and I think in terms of when you're writing your application, a few hints and tips, you know, you know um, I think you've got to be clear and concise and realistic. And a lot of these questions you're answering, you might get 400 words to answer it, which is pretty short. Um, so you've got to be really uh, clear and concise and get your points across mm -hmm. there. The assessors don't have time to look at the application. So it's really, you've got to make their life easy for them. Um, I think timing's everything. So as soon as the competition's launched, you know, um, get going there, speak to your consortium, start writing as soon as you can. And I think link to that, don't leave it too late to submit your application, you know. Um, don't leave it to the last day, definitely not, because there can be challenges when the system slows down because lots of people are uploading at the same time and things like that. But equally, just when you're working with your consortium, you know, you might need to ask your consortium partners questions. And, you know, again, if you leave it to the last minute, there's more chance for things to go wrong. And finally, you know, a lot of these competitions are very uh, competitive. So you've got to write a, a, write a proposal that excites and inspires. And it's really going to make you stand out from the crowd. So, you know, um, how, is this, how is this technology going to be game-changing for your industry sector or lead to a real um, novel technology, which is going to make a big breakthrough for you, both for the UK and globally, I think. So, mm. yeah. Definitely. Great. Well, you, you heard it from the horse's mouth, everyone. <laughs> um, some really great tips and tricks there. So, no, thank you, David. Um, and, and thank you to Chris as well again um, for joining us today. I really hope you found um found our presentations useful and um, we do have a packed agenda for the rest of the week so tomorrow um as chris alluded to we will be hearing from two of our agrotech residents and they're going to tell you exactly what it's like um to be an eagle lab agrotech resident and and how we support them and, and how they've gone through their growth journey wednesday we're going to be hearing from our four centers of excellence and um, that that you've heard about earlier on today um in today's webinar Thursday, we're going to be looking at the fun at the funding and investment scene. Um, so as it's been mentioned today, we're going to have um, Chris Danks and he's going to be speaking around um, the opportunities there in that new program. And Friday, we're bringing it all together um, we're wrapping it all up and we're really looking at how you can adapt your how you can adapt your operating model and how you can pivot in order to apply this technology to your business. So I really hope you find it interesting over the course of the next week. Um, as ever if you do have any feedback or any suggestions feel free to drop um even myself um roxanne.martin at barclays.com or my colleague wendy an email but yeah looking forward to seeing you throughout the rest of the week so take care enjoy the rest of your day